Hi, everybody. Welcome back to Biotime. A little bit later in the show, we'll have Jimmy Cantrell up. Jimmy Cantrell is candidate for Lafouche Parish president. We'll talk a little bit about his platform, his party affiliation, and he has run for that position uh, before. We'll talk a little bit about why he wants to uh, be parish president over in Lafouche Parish. But first, Senator Norby Jaber was in the studio a little bit earlier today. Martin sat down with him. They had about a 15-minute talk. Let's listen to Martin Falls and Norby Jaber. All right, there you see him, State Senator Norby Shawbear, and of course he is running again uh, to get reelected to his seat that he has served, and of course he is followed in the footsteps of his father and his brother, and and now he's a veteran. So you're up for uh, re-election now. But first of all, before we talk about re-election, how's it been the last couple of years, and what have you learned the most, and what has come back to memory for you by being in there? Well, whenever you say what's come back to memory, it's uh, we're going to need a longer show. Uh, yeah. You know, when I first stepped foot on the Senate floor so many years ago, I was a six-year-old boy. And uh, when I left, when Marty decided he wasn't going to run again, you know, I was, I was a 20-year-old man. And uh, that's, it's half of your lifetime spent doing various things from being a page to, you know, working as a legislative assistant. Um, it was just great to be back in the building. I tell you, the, the first day that I went up there after being you know, sworn in here locally before we went into session, you know, I got my office and uh, got to walk around and, and see all the staff as with, with a few folks up there calling you know, Senator Shawbear version 3.0. <laughs> uh, you, you get the same things that, that you get around here. You know, God, I haven't seen you in so long. You look like your brother. You look like your dad. You look like your mother. I like those better than I like the other two, uh, but it was a it, it was very much um, like being reacquainted with an old friend. I have so many memories in that building. Watch so many legislative fights, um, some for the good guys, some for the bad guys, and and that's the way the process works. Your side doesn't always win, and it didn't take long to learn that lesson. Uh, serving, but have, have the fights become remembering what your daddy had to go through to get things done for this area of the fights become a little more personal and volatile over the years or how do you remember well I'm gonna tell you something Martin and it's it's interesting that you bring that point up one of the neat things that they do do in the legislature is they got this thing they call old senators day old rep day mm -hmm. when they bring back those those various members that have served in the Senate it's it's nice you know we get folks like Governor Foster that comes back you know folks like Paul Hardy who served as Secretary of State and Lieutenant Governor as well as so many other senators there and they've always considered me you know a, a part of the a, a part of the family right. uh, now I'm part of the fraternity yeah. uh, and they ask that question quite often you know you grew up here how are things different and the tone Martin is completely different than mm -hmm. the the Senate that I remember um, back then it, it's like they talk about local politics like they talk about Washington politics. Mm -hmm. You know, Ronald Reagan and Tip O'Neill didn't agree. Right. But at the end of the day, they can go have dinner. Right. You know, they can get a drink together. The same right. thing with, with the Republicans um, in, the, in the body that had to deal with the Democrats in the body. Now it's completely different. You saw it with the presidential address last night, uh, how different. You know, it's one thing if the president takes to the airwaves to make an announcement about policy mm -hmm. that didn't happen last night right. it's another thing when the when the rebuttal is uh, by the opposing party to oppose that announcement mm -hmm. all we had last night was a debate and they brought the American people into the debate and that's unfortunate but the the partisanship has grown so much uh, in DC that it's filtered down to the capital and the statesmanship Rouge. seems to be lost but it's also gone. also People poll everything for their answers now instead of speaking from the heart. And, and I think what I like about you in our interviews over the last couple of years and watching you with Jason on his show, you don't have a script. No. It, it comes from the heart pretty much. Well, sometimes I can get you in trouble. But, uh, but most of the time it gets you on the right path. There's no doubt. There's no doubt. You know, the best speeches come from one place, and that is the heart. You know, you should put a lot of thought into what you say and not just fly off the cuff willy-nilly. But again, that goes back to your preparation. Um, and when I was deciding whether or not I was going to run again, uh, you know, I promised the people, I promised them on this set that I would look back at my performance, 
you know, did I prepare myself for the legislative session? Mm -hmm. Did I do my due diligence representing them in Baton Rouge and here locally? You know, you can always second guess when it's, you know, and that's that's another thing is when you're pushing the button and it's your name on the line that's mm -hmm. responsible for that vote that you know is going to affect so many people, it's quite the change. So you always go back in Monday morning quarterback, mm -hmm. you know, did I vote yes when I should have voted no? Did I vote mm -hmm. no when I should have voted yes? Um, well, how do you think you did if you had to vote? You know, if you had to grade yourself, which is hard to do. Well, what really is neat, what's what's an unfortunate and fortunate aspect of this job is that so many other people grade you, and you can go back and look at some of your tapes that we had during the debates. And I said, I'm never going to be a hundred percent vote with anybody. I can't agree with yeah. my mother that much. <laughs> um, so I've been scored um, by by the big name Family Forum. You know, had me somewhere at a seventy nine percent. I'm gonna be an eighty percent vote with just about everybody. Right. Um, Unfortunately, the process is, is very cockeyed, uh, and those numbers can be distorted. For example, you know, I consider myself a, a strong business conservative. I'm a small businessman. I employ you know, 10 people here in this parish. Some of them live in Lafourche. Um, I go with business more often than I'll go with industry, mm -hmm. and that's a huge difference in this state. We've got business, which is small business like me, small business like you. Mm. Um, those companies that employ two or three hundred people. And then we've got industry in this state that employ literally, you know, tens of thousands of people. Mm -hmm. They fight very hard at the Capitol to get what they want. And it's a no, it's it's a their way or the highway mm -hmm. uh, example. You know, tax breaks for billionaires sometimes right. is, is what it equates to. And I'm going to stand up for the small businessman, the true small businessman, the, the mom and pop operation on the buyer that's trying to get by in a world of Walmart. Um, so you got an organization called Louisiana Business and Industry. Well, they'll get caught in an issue where it puts industry versus business. And I'm going to side with industry. We had a, a, a bill last year about liability for truckers. Now, you know better than anybody. We've got so many trucking companies around here. Heck, half of our Three quarters of our of our economy is based on getting a good from Homa or Lafayette to Fouchon mm -hmm. or to Houston. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're a trucking economy down here. Right. I'm going to side with trucking every single time. I'm going to side with that hotshot guy. I'm going to side with the guy that's got the, the the piece of drill pipe on the back of the truck that's mm -hmm. taking it from here to there, wherever it may be. Well, bit industry was fighting that and saying that the trucker and the trucking company and the person responsible for the freight should carry more liability even though in their yard they may, may be completely liable. Mm -hmm. Say somebody didn't load a part right. We may have to vote on that vote six times. It get, you never wanna, I never want to compare myself to John Kerry, but he made the infamous statement now, I voted for that before I voted against it. Mm -hmm. You know, What happens in the process sometimes is you'll come before a committee like uh, judiciary B, which I serve, where that very bill that I'm speaking of came up. And you always hear this. Let's just vote it out of committee so we can debate it on the full floor. Right. And usually people are amicable to that. And quite often you amend it in the committee process mm -hmm. to put it in a posture where you can allow that full debate. Sometimes you vote against okay. them things. Well, if you vote against lobbying committee because you're for business and not for industry in that particular mm -hmm. circumstance, Boom, that's a vote against Lobby. Well, somebody's going to try to use they're that. Gonna, they're going to yeah. score you, and unfortunately, my Lobby vote is not as good as it, as it could have been. You know, one difference between me and my dad is he would have said, Fanuch on Lobby, and, <laughs> and just railed against him and, and did what he thought was right. Mm -hmm. I try to see things a little, a little more clearly mm -hmm. uh, than that. I think I'm a little more patient, and I don't hold a grudge. Uh, I think that has benefited me uh, greatly in Baton Rouge. And... Um, you know, sometimes it works against me. Sometimes it works uh, uh, for me. I could be a little trusting sometimes. Well, let me ask you this. What are you – you had some tough issues we when did. you first go around. Of course, the redistricting was, was huge, and, and I know you fought to keep Nichols in your district. But talk about the, the toughest three votes that or decisions that you had to make in your first term. Well, you know, uh, let, me, let, me, let me preface that statement with saying – and I made this speech on the floor when I railed on the all spill. Mm -hmm. If you'd have told me, you know, eight months into my term after being elected that the Gulf would be polluted, we right. couldn't shrimp, and there'd be a 
you know, uh, arbitrary and capricious, as my good friend uh, Secretary Scott Angel likes to say, moratorium placed on drilling, and we couldn't drill and we couldn't fish. I'd have told you you were crazy. Right. You know, so that came up, and although there were no votes really pertaining to that, um, except for one that we got beat on, which again was an anti lobby vote, which is crazy, uh, that vote was to allow our Attorney General, okay, to go out and contract with attorneys in this state to represent our people okay in this what is going to probably go down as one of the largest lawsuits against uh, an industry in the history of this country well the fiscal conservatives that uh, that said you know there is no way we should fund the hiring of trial lawyers even though those trial lawyers were going to be brought in to fight for our businesses and our industry and our small business people mm -hmm. It was a tough vote. It was a hard vote. But let me tell you something about our Attorney General's office. As capable as, capable as they can be, they can't beat an industry like BP that operates with a legal department that has a billion-dollar budget or more mm -hmm. when they have an $80 million budget right. to litigate everything that, excuse me, everything that our state has to deal with. Mm -hmm. That was a tough vote. We lost that vote, okay? Mm -hmm. And which is why a lot of uh, our folks have been extremely disappointed, none more frustrated than me with the claims process. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it got to the point where I had to call down the Attorney General to meet with constituents here locally in Homa that were so frustrated with the process. You hear it every night, mm -hmm. you know, on your show. Um, that, was, that was something I was, I hated that we lost that fight, but as they say, it is what it is. Um, the votes on redistricting in the special session extremely difficult uh not for me because i always voted with the people of terrebonne and lafouche parish every single time it 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 hurt to lose uh, a couple of those fights in the waning hours of the session but people need not forget you know i was a major part if not one of the catalysts for passing not one but two plans out of the Senate. But you didn't have help from two fellow senators who could have got up and, and helped you. Well, end. I disagree with that statement to the point of, you know, one. Well, maybe one, because one. Senator Gotro yeah, was I, not very active in that, and, and yeah. we could have used some more help on his front, but to use his words, not mine, he just really didn't care about congressional reapportionment mm -hmm. as much as he cared about, you know, local districting, uh, redistricting, and, and that's completely up to him, and that's fine. Senator Joel Chasson, the president of the Senate, who carried, you know, a lot of the redistricting mm -hmm. legislation, um, you know, he was my greatest ally. He helped pass those two bills out of the Senate. But he is the president of the Senate. And when it came down to him passing out a reapportionment plan that could be signed by the governor and pass the process without having to cost the taxpayers more money, bring us into a second redistricting mm -hmm. session following this session, well, he had to take off his local Senate District 19 hat and be President Joel Shasso on the Senate and pass out a plan. And that's when we lost our, our my biggest ally. Right. And that's when Terrebonne and Lafouche got split. So, you know, Joel was there for us when, when, when he had to be. Uh, but when he had to be the president of the Senate, that, that's when we really lost that fight. And we fought till the very mm -hmm. end. That was a um, fight for the ages, no doubt. It was, it was. And, 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 you know, at the end of the day, Martin, I really believe that we're going to be better off having two congressmen represent us uh, because even though we were split into North Terrebonne, uh, North Lafouche, and mm -hmm. South Terrebonne, and South Lafouche, we weren't separated mm -hmm. from Terrebonne going one way and Lafouche going another right. way. That could have been completely detrimental for the one most pressing issue that faces us in this area, and that's coastal erosion. Mm -hmm. You would have had Terrebonne that would have went west, okay, Southern mm -hmm. Terrebonne Parish, the only eroding parish in the entire western congressional district mm -hmm. where we would have become not a, not a, a, a stepchild, we would have been an afterthought. Yeah. So keeping South Terrebonne and South Lafouche in the eastern portion of a congressional district where those all of those parishes are eroding, you get a champion for coastal restoration, and we're going to have that in Congressman Steve Scalise. Let me ask you, with, with about 90 seconds left, obviously you made a decision that you want to continue, you want to be reelected, and you are the incumbent now. What kind of thoughts would you give the people why they should reelect Norby Chavez? Well, you know, to finish up that third point on, you know, the third most difficult decision I had, and that was to switch from Democrat to Republican. 
You know, I was That's a true. lifelong that, that Democrat. That was huge. That was that was huge. You know, but I'll be honest with you. When when I look back on my decision, I made it with a, a clear mind and a, a clean heart. Mm-hmm. You know, I just have more in common with people than John Boehner, like John Boehner, who grew up sweeping uh, floors in a bar room. You know, I swept. My first job uh, outside of the house was was sleep sweeping parking lots, stocking coolers, and cleaning bathrooms at Marty J's truck stop. You know, when I was 16 in high school, I'm a bar owner now. Okay, I don't have anything in common with Barack Obama, who's Harvard educated, and other than the fact that that he's a liberal Democrat, and I've never been a liberal. You know, I've been a moderate Democrat in the past, but that was one of the toughest decisions I have to make. I don't have anything in common with Barack and Nancy Pelosi. I do have something in common with John Boehner and the folks that are trying to keep our hard-earned tax dollars in our pocket. That was the, the probably the most difficult decision, but I made it, and I'm happy I made it because. You know, that all moratorium that he imposed on us, that job killing thing, uh, aside from a hurricane, that is the worst thing that could happen to our people. And we're feeling the repercussions of it every single day. Why do I think I need to run again? Well, I asked myself, like I told you earlier, did I do a good job? Did I prepare myself? And uh, I had a long, hard look at myself. And I decided that I shouldn't answer the question, that I should listen to my constituents. Mm -hmm. And... The response has been overwhelming that they want me to run again. So I'm happy to announce that I am going to seek re-election for Senate District 20. Uh, I think I've done a pretty decent job as your senator. I'm never going to be right all the time. Uh, I'm not going to know everything. And like I said when I ran the first time, I ain't going to be the smartest uh, guy in the room. But nobody's going to outwork me. And nobody's going to better represent you on the Senate floor than Norby Shawbear. So I humbly ask for your support and your vote, and I thank you for allowing me to come on. Yeah, anytime, Norby. And, uh, we, we're going to have a string of debates here in HTV like yeah. we had in the past. And, Looking uh, forward to it. It'll, it'll be fun, and we appreciate you coming on by your time and sharing your thoughts. And uh, now we leave it up to the voters. That's right, right as well, it should be. You're right. Once again, Norby Shawbear, and we're going to, of course, we're going to go back to Stan, and he has more guests, including. Uh, right after the break, he'll be back with someone who's running for Lafouche Parish president to challenge the incumbent Charlotte Randolph. And that'll be next. Don't go away.